Okay, so I'm going to start. Okay, so I'm going to start, and tonight I'm going to be streaming some reinforcement for my students, and what we'll be doing tonight is part one of a how to make a design and program a rail shooter using Game Maker Studio 2. Now, I want to kind of go over several things on what tools we're going to be using today. Uh, the first tool we're going to be using is uh, Photoshop, because there's going to be a lot of Photoshop. Whenever you're working in these types of projects, you need Photoshop. We're also going to be working in Game Maker Studio. So I've got my Game Maker Studio license. I've got my Photoshop license. And then I've got, oh, look, I've got... Um, uh, what is this? Chrome. That's right. We're going to surf the web and we're going to use only the open access images from the Cleveland Museum of Arts collection. I like doing this because the images are on the public domain and it's fun and my students can't. My students are at the Cleveland Institute of Art and they're required to actually draw all their assets. So I'm not going to draw today. I'm going to do a little bit of photoshopping and today is going to be a fairly fast tutorial. I want us to kind of see how fast I can go over all of this. I do have the chat window up. So if you are watching this live and you're just kind of wanting to ask a question, I actually have set it up so I can see the chat window. So there you go. All right, let's get started. So this is going to be a classic rail shooter. Well, it's going to start out like a classic rail shooter. And with a rail shooter, I'm looking at basically five main elements. You're a hero shooting hero bullets at an enemy shooting enemy bullets in some sort of an environment. That's the primary thing I'm looking at. I need those five basic elements. So where do I begin? Well, I'm going to talk to a little bit of logic because I don't want to just start doing a tutorial and then get stuck with all these graphics and not know what I'm going to be dealing with. So I need to think through what kind of graphics I'm going to be committing to over the next, you know, three, four, five, six sessions. What's going to make me happy? So uh, I think I, did I type in skull? Yes, I typed in skull. I'm at the Cleveland Museum of Arts website their open access collection is ultra high resolution uncompressed tiffs and their public domain so god bless them really good stuff so i typed in skull because i thought skulls would be fun and now i've got to decide what am i going to do now interesting i also want to make sure that when i'm doing this i'm not being offensive so we see a lot of multicultural art here i don't want to just like randomly build something that suddenly is you know not polite all right, so I don't know what this is, but this is a Savoyard helmet, and I like it. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to click it. I don't know if this is going to be my hero or my enemy yet, but I'm definitely going to do this. Come over here, and I'm going to download the high-resolution TIFF, and voila, it's downloading. And it is big. It's 120 megabytes. So again, I'm always thankful to the Cleveland Museum of Art. For doing this. All right, so I've got a helmet. Now, what I like about the helmet, of course, is the aspect ratio. I don't want things that are like really tall and skinny because everything I want to have more of a rounder, squarish aesthetic makes my life a little bit easier. I always uh, remind my students as they're designing these games, think more Smurf and less Gargamel in terms of the aspect ratio. So I've got one of my five elements. That feels pretty good. All right, so I don't want a sword, but maybe I want a dagger. You know, a dagger might be, oh, though those are pretty big. See, I don't like the aspect ratio of those. Those are too big. Ooh, that one's pretty good. That's, that's not a bad one right there. All right, keep scrolling. I'm going to spend more time tonight scrolling through art than it is. Ooh, look at that. That's nice. Uh, more time scrolling through art than I am going to be programming tonight. And that happens too. All right, let's come back up and take a look at which one. I do like that one. That's really nice. That Tibetan dagger with a little face in it. That's a good one. Uh, yeah, let's do it. All right. I know I just talked about being multicultural and not offensive. So I'm hoping this isn't offensive. All right. But that's really a great dagger. Look at that. All right, I'm going to kind of download this high-resolution TIFF. Great. So now I have two pieces of art. Two, two pieces of art. All right, so now I need a third piece of art. So I have a, um, a skull. And, no, actually, really, it wasn't a skull. It was more of a helmet. So maybe I should look up the word helmet. 
All right, what am I gonna get? Ooh, that's a good one. Ooh, that's that's a really nice. Oh, look at that. That's a really good one. That would make that that makes me happy. I'm not even gonna go. I'm gonna say I'm not gonna scroll down, and then I do. Yeah. So if that's gonna be compared to this, then these will be my bad guys, and these will be my good guys. So I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna grab this, and I'm gonna download that. Oops. There's the tiff. All right. So now I have my hero. This is my hero. I have my enemy, because there's going to be multiples. That's my enemy. And I have this bullet, which is the dagger. I don't know if that dagger is a good or a bad guy yet, but I'm getting there. And so what else should I look at? Hmm. So what am I going to look at? I can't have a dagger. I'll look up for the word knife. It's become thesaurus time here. All right. Ooh, I like that knife. No, it's not the right type of knife. All right, let's look for something. Ooh. Ritual flaying knife. I, I don't. That's a scary. I do like that though. I just like the face on that. That's just that's just good altogether. I'm trying to keep things together. Ooh, fishtail knife. I like the fishtail knife. The fishtail knife is good. That's really really kind of nice. I don't know why I'm. I don't know. Oh wait, there's some good blades here too. I don't know why I'm liking that fishtail knife, but. Uh, da, 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 da. All right, let's come back up and decide what it is it that I want. And I think I'm going to go for the flaying knife. Um, and I, I don't know why. Again, yeah, it's just going to just a beautiful knife. Again, I like the sort of round thing. And I have something in mind I can do later on when it comes to animating. Because one of the things we're going to do as we get to later in this is we're going to talk about what it takes to animate these things. So now I have it. I have I have a, a hero and an enemy. I have a hero projectile and an enemy projectile, which we sometimes call bullets. And now I need an environment. So where is this taking place in? So I can type uh, woods, maybe outdoors. Maybe it's going to take a place somewhere in the woods. And... Hmm, do I do a green woods or do I do a sunny woods or I do something papery? The funny thing about using something papery is that it'll create amazing contrast, which is very nice uh, and very useful. Uh, but I want something kind of generic. I want something really, you know, I, I just said woods, but really what I was about to say is what I want is a landscape. Landscape. All right, let's check out the landscape here. And we're going to find, there it is. I knew it was going to be, there's my Frederick Edwin Church. I, I, I love Church's paintings and um, why not create this, uh, use some of this as a background for my, uh, for my video game. All right, voila. So I've done it. I have now five pieces of art. They're in my uh, downloads folder. Actually, they're still downloading. I have made a nice little uh, folder here somewhere called uh, Spring 2020 Demo. Um, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to my downloads and I'm going to grab my five pieces of art and throw them in there and look at the extra large icons. So this is what we've started with. So how far am I into this? I've been... Hmm. All right, so it only took me about eight and a half minutes, eight and a half minutes to decide what kind of art I wanted to work with. Again, I'd like to thank the Cleve Museum of Art. They will be my infinite source of clip art for years to come. So I'm going to design a video game. Now, we're not going to get to Game Maker yet. And again, we will get to Game Maker, uh, but we're not getting into Game Maker yet. And I see somebody in the window and uh, I don't know what that icon is. You got to remember, I'm an old man. I don't read icons. Also, I'm blind and they're really, really small. So in the chat window, whoever that is, hi, how you doing? So I need to come over here and start deciding what my game is going to look like. And I, by that, I want to start with my basic aspect ratio. Now, with the Space Invaders, we're normally doing sort of a portrait-based game with the invaders on top and the, the hero on the bottom. But because we know we're designing for screen, I'm going to be creating something a little bit more traditional. File, new, and I'm going to come over here and do 1024 by 768. 1024 by 768 pixels. The DPI is irrelevant because it's at screen. So whether it's one pixel per inch or 300, it doesn't matter. All that matters is the 1024 
my 768. I come over here and I create it, and this is my canvas. This is what I'm going to be working with. This is how I'm going to assemble all of my graphics. Now, before I'm going to come over here and just save that file, save as, and I'm going to go here. I'm going to save it on the desktop in the folder that I just made. If I can find it, there it is. And I'm going to call this my um, game. Is my rail shooter. How nice and original. All right. So there it is. Now I'm going to leave this here. We're going to put the assets in. The trick to designing a good rail shooter, the trick to designing any game, is to make sure that the proportions are accurate. Now, one of the things that's nice is, is I'm going to come over here and start with my first piece of art. And let's come over here and drag in the church. Beautiful. There's the background. And like I tell all of my students, name your layers. So this is going to be my background layer. There it is. And I'm using the smart objects right now. I'm actually not going to use that in a little bit, but for at least for this one, obviously I want this to be bigger. So I'm going to hit control T and I am going to, oops, not that one. And I'm going to hit control T and make it bigger. I'm so old school. I'm so used to after you hit control T to hold the shift key down to constrain proportions, which of course Adobe has eliminated. So it's all great if you're a noob, but if you're an old person, then you now make mistakes all the time. So that is my environment for my video game. All right. So far, so good. Are you enjoying it out there? Good. All right. If you're watching this recorded, then obviously you can't comment. Well, you can comment because we will see in the little YouTube thing because it starts at Twitch and ends up in YouTube and where it goes from there. I have no idea. All right. So we're going to come over here and I'm going to edit down each of the other four pieces of graphics to be as clean as possible. And uh, I'm going to bring it in and let's take a look. Ooh. I get to watch a little bit of my Photoshop magic. I'm going to turn my background layer into a regular layer by double clicking on it, which of course frees it up from the background. And um, I'm going to clear that guide that they left in. I know who actually left that guide in. And I'm gonna come over here and grab my quick selection tool and see just how close I can get. Oh, I'm losing a bit of it, right? All right, so. Uh, too much. Now, what's cool about the quick selection tool, which a lot of people don't know, is that there's um, you can add to the selection and you can subtract to it. So I can come back to the quick selection tool, and if I hold the um, uh, the Alt key down, I can subtract from it, which is what I'm doing right now, so that I can say, no, 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 put that back. Put this stuff back in the picture that I'm keeping. Um, da, 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 da. Do, do, do. This is pretty not, oops, a little too far with the zoom there. All right, I'm going to zoom back in. And I have to be patient with these things. Right, there's another way of doing this all together, and it's kind of a hybrid approach. So I can come over here and say, man, this, now that looks pretty good. I actually kind of like that. I mean, it's a little bit off here or there. So I could do is grab the polygonal lasso tool and subtract from this negative space thing the little bits and pieces I'm trying to get here, right? So I come over here, dot, 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 dot. And grab the big stuff, and that lets me see. And then I'm using the shift key. I can add, because again, I'm not selecting the helmet. I'm selecting everything but the helmet. As I commonly say, sometimes you want to grab the plate, and sometimes you want to grab the cookie. All right, so that looks good. Now I've got to come over here and do this. It's kind of weird that the lighter ones aren't working out, but again, now you're thinking, oh my God, you have to be so precise. I'm going to spend hours doing this. I'm not, uh, not because I don't care. I, d I do care, but I have to remember that at the end of the day, this is a fairly low resolution project. So let's come over here. So if you like watching me Photoshop, I'm going to do this. Oh, I'm going to do this. Well, how many times? Four times. But I think this is the worst of them because it's got that really delicate edge. Now, I could I could probably do a little bit more in some of these spots, but 
I don't honestly know if that's true. Now, down here it is, because I can see that. Oh. The fun thing about the selection tool, if you make a mistake and you haven't done anything else, you can always hit undo. Just remember, your selection is going to last forever as long as you're pressing the shift key to add the selection, or in this case, the minus key to subtract the selection. I am very much thinking about cutting out everything that's here. All right. And I'm just looking for those things that are a little bit obvious. I could keep the shadow if I wanted to, by the way. That's something else that you really have to start making these decisions about what's in and what's out because you can do a lot of crafting sculpting at this point that isn't quite right. Does that look good? Uh, does that look good? If you're out there still, does that look good? No, let's see if there's any other couple little dots out there. All right, so I zoom out. Three, two, one, kapow. How does that look? That looks pretty good. Notice that this is the high resolution image. Now, I'm going to stop what I'm doing. I'm going to go, yay, high resolution image, file, save as, and I could save it as a, I'll, instead of a TIFF, I'll save it as a PNG since it'll be a separate file name, but it'll keep the transparency. It's um, beautiful. I'm saving it the smallest setting, which means it's going to take forever to save. That's the only bad part about saving small. But while it's doing that, I will load the next graphic. I'll load the, I'll load the enemy next. Okay, there it is. Uh, and, all right. Interestingly enough, oh, there it is. I can come over here, convert the background layer into regular, and see how good the quick selection tool is going to do for me today. All right. So far, so good. All right, okay. Ooh, I like it when it's working. Okay, that's pretty good. It's not perfect, but it's really close really fast. All right, let's come back over to this. Oh, it's still saving. All right, bum, bum, bum. And subtract out that little nub up there. That's good. Around the ears. I know those aren't ears. All right, now let's take a look. What do we got? Grab that little bit. Now, here's a fun one. Do I want to make that little hole transparent? Do I want to make this little hole transparent? It's possible. It won't affect the game too much, but a little bit of color seeping through could be really cool, or it could be a nightmare. So I'm going to pretend that it's part of the thing. All right. All right, so there you go on this one. I think it looks pretty good, then. All right, and delete. Oh, that was so fast, wasn't it? File, save as, and again, PNG. Save, voila. Two down. Two to go. Now, for memory's sake, I'm going to grab this, copy it, close it, and paste it. It's going to be huge. It's all right. <laughs> Look at the big that is. That's crazy. All right. So I'm going to come over here and make it. A lot smaller. All right. This makes sense so far? No, no real. It's all Photoshop and design. There's a lot of design going on in here. here. All right. That's all right. 
All right, now I have this. I like this. Look at that. Nice and shiny. Stands out fairly well. All right. I'm going to leave it there for a second. All right. Now it's good. This one's still saving, so I can't do anything with it. So oops, let's come over here, and let's grab the dagger. All right. Oh, let's hope this works. Any questions so far? Good. Oops, way too. Oh, it grabbed everything. That's ridiculous. All right, let's see how this goes. Okay, so I'll zoom in a bit. All right, let it do its thing. It'll pop in. All right, so this in here, let that pop in. This in here, this in there. You know, part of the reason is that this is so high res. I mean, I'm only at 50%. Isn't that crazy? All right, let's see it again. It's a shame this all isn't going to show up in the final product because it's so high res. Dum -dum. Okay, so now I'm going to trim out. So I'm going to subtract. I'm going to add. All right, so that looks pretty good up, up to here. This looks good around here, but right over here we got a problem. So. That's good. It's a strange craving for dim sum, which has nothing to do with what I'm looking at. But I don't know. It just came to me. All right. We'll look there. Now, there's two reasons to really do do a really good job. The first reason, of course, is because you want to do a really good job. The other reason is once I have this isolated, I might use it for something else. All right.
there's a real patience to doing this. You have to enjoy it. Some people really don't. You've got to sort of embrace the, I'm just doing photo editing. So that looks good. That could be a bit better. Hmm. That looks good. That looks good. That looks oh, it looks really great. Oops, there's a mistake. All right, I can fix that. I alted when I should have plussed. There you go. And, oh, beautiful. File, save, oops, nope, not save. I want to do a save as, make my PNG. Save as. All right, and then while that's saving, I'll come over here, copy this, and paste it into the big document. Once in the big document, I can shrink it down. All right, I think it's there. Yeah, that's it. Oof. Shows you the resolution of this document. Look at that. Wow, that's crazy. But this step is essential. One of the things you don't want to do is start resizing just inside your game programming. You want to have this canvas up here. You want to have the pieces in here. You want to be able to arrange it in here. And then you want to bring in the smaller sizes pieces into your game. And that's what this is about. So come over here. That's nice. All right. That's two. And that's three. Ooh. Bring it out. And then one more piece to edit. All right, come over here, and we'll edit this flaying thing. Oof, look at that. Double click, turn it to regular layer, and let's see if my quick selection tool is happy now. My tolerance must be off on this. Let's see if I can... See, this will make it better. Nope. Same as before. That was really funny. Just did the whole thing. But we know how to undo that. I'm using the Alt key to subtract. Subtracted too much. Because this is too big. Any questions from the audience? My audience went to sleep. All right. That's a good starting point. Let's zoom in and do some more. All right, so this one. Come over here and get that edge. It's kind of weird. I'm working with a lot of lag here. 
This is a real high res image, but you get used to what you're doing. Or I could say, let's do it the old fashioned way. Come over here and just start going. I haven't done this uh, this this time at all. I haven't done the, the manual way. Just a little bit of pulling the lasso. I always have my hand on the backspace key so I can unravel as needed. Sometimes it's it's good to just take complete control over your editing versus to use the quick selection tool and then clean it up. So, so you have different options in front of you. And again, we have a lot of leeway because when I shrink it, most of this detail is going to disappear anyway, especially the edges. Obviously, you don't want to make anything too egregious, but beyond that, you're okay. All right. And now I don't want to get too far without saving some of this because I don't want to delete. Oh, look at that. That's nice and pretty. So I come back over here and do it again. So there's a question about how far do you go before you delete some of it so you can feel like you're playing without a net. Technically, I'm not saving along the way if the whole thing crashes on me, but, you know, that's, that's neither here nor there at the moment. You have to assume that my Photoshop is going to crash. And all the demos I've given, I don't think I've ever had Photoshop crash on me. I've had other software packages crash, but not Photoshop. Thank you, Adobe. Was pretty fast. And because it's got a hard edge, it isn't that hard to define the edge. People always ask, why don't you use the trace contours one? I or the which is the magnetic lasso tool. And I hate the magnetic lasso tool. It never works unless I'm demoing that it isn't working. Whenever I go to demonstrate how it doesn't work, it works just fine. This is going just fine. I like real time as well. There's something to be said about being able to say you saw me work every bit of this. So you can know what what kind of care and feeding I take. And again, for my own students, if you're watching this, the, the art part of this should be the most straightforward. You've been sketching. You've been drawing. You've been rendering. What I'm doing is creating the editing. You will not be editing other people's images. You're just going to be designing your own. Just going to be drawing. I find something fun about not drawing. Also because I don't draw very well, so or at all. So the last thing you want to do is see me draw. Oh, I hate when I do that. I screwed that little piece over there up. So I'll subtract it. All right. And then I'll the other little bits and pieces I did wrong that goes in and this goes out alright so let me just delete that and keep going notice I'm not getting upset I never get upset no use crying over spilled photoshop You can see it doesn't take a lot of clicks to create a relatively decent contour without any really jagged or sharp edges. And if you find one, you can always unravel and do it again. There's a lot of what I'm doing. It's just trying to find whatever that right angle is. And by right angle, I mean the correct angle, not the right angle. Because All right. The blade goes fast. All 
right. All right, so now we come over here. Make sure I don't do that mistake again. Don't want to make the same mistake twice. Good. Delete. Look at that. I only got one section left. Hmm. Oh, two sections because I've got another little surprise to go. What's nice is these are all photographs, which is kind of fun. Uh, someone just commented that it doesn't look like an anaglyph. This is an anaglyph. Doesn't it say, uh, doesn't it say my, that I'm streaming a game design? What is my, what does my title say? I just got a question about what I'm streaming in the chat window. And I will send them back to look. Did I not hit the apply button? I am doing Photoshop to create a rail shooter. That's what I'm doing. And bam. I'm going to come over here and take a peek and see if my... Yes, it says... Oh, no, it doesn't. Let me, let me try the update information. How to design and program a rail shooter in Game Maker Studio Part 1. That's what it says now. Oh, there you go. So, I did not bring you here under false pretenses. I might have. If I did, I apologize. That was a complete mistake. I am working on Photoshop and making a rail shooter. And I will create the negative space on this one. And see if I can get it with this. Oh, that is not good. Way too big. Oh, that's not good either. All right, let's get rid of the other stuff. Oops, wrong, wrong one. There we go. So other than this is not being anaglyph, because that was my last tutorial, is there any questions that are more relevant from the audience? As in, this is an anaglyph. Select inverse. The title is fixed now. Yes, I know. I just fixed it. Sorry. All right. So let me come over here and fix those two little holes. They're beautiful there. Instead of using the quick selection tool, I use the magic wand tool. I will make sure it's contiguous. Set it 30. Oops. Not 30. 10. Beautiful. Beautiful. There we go. Eh, a little jaggedy in there, but it won't matter too much. All right, so come over here. And I'm going to save it. Save as back to a PNG. And here comes the big reveal. The theme of this rail shooter is, drum roll please, wait for it to come in and then I will... It's a whole lot of metal, basically. It's a whole lot of metal. So now that everything is in place, I can magnify and glass fit screen, and I can save. And now we can take a look at our rail shooter. So your hero is this helmet of armor, which I should probably rename hero. Your enemy, Nera, dare I say enemies, is this one over here. And I think I made it a good size. And because I did, I am going to paste it a few times and see what it looks like. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four is nice. That looks pretty good. Now, whose bullet is whose? Now, one of the rules is you don't want to have the bullet bigger than yourself. The bullet's going to be after a lot smaller, but I'm going to call this my hero bullet. 
And I'm going to make it a lot smaller. Wham. Yeah. Because I want it to be, if it's too big, then it becomes like a shield. And I don't want it to be a shield. So that's going to be the hero bullet. And the enemy bullet, oh, it's definitely going to be the enemy bullet. Enemy bullet. And, of course, he's going to go like this. And also a whole lot smaller. All right. So that relationship feels good. Nothing. The enemy bill could be a little bit squatter. I have to decide whether I can get away with making it smaller or even I'm going to do something stupid here and maybe even make it a little squatter. I think I can do it without ruining it. Yeah, there we go. I don't think anyone would notice that. All right, so here's my game. This is my game. Hey, what do you think? Good. I'm glad you like it. So now I've saved this and I've closed this window, so all my windows are closed, except for my one big Photoshop window. So my big Photoshop window is open. This is my look and feel of the game. Now, when I'm looking at this, I want to make sure that I really am paying attention to what I'm looking at. Is there enough proportion? Does this make sense to each other? Is the contrast good? Uh, is the things too big, is things too small? Because how long does it take to go from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen? How long does it take to go from the right to the screen and the left to the screen? All that type of stuff makes a big difference. Now, we're going to be playing with these pieces inside of Game Maker, but I saved all the original pieces because when I do the animation, when I do anything where I'm modifying it, I'm going to go back to those original pieces so I'm not working with low-res stuff in the future. So I have the high-res I have the at res, which is my approximate, and then I go from there. So I now need to export these pieces. Now, it's kind of easy to do this. It's kind of very fun. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right-click on the background, and I'm going to say Quick Export as PNG. And it's going to come over here and ask me, what do I want it called? And I'm going to say uh, background because it's named properly, thank God. And then I go to my hero and I do quick export as PNG and it's, oh, look, it's hero. And then I do enemy, right click, quick export as PNG and it's enemy. And I do hero bullet, quick export as PNG, hero bullet. And lastly, enemy bullet, quick export as PNG, enemy bullet. So now I have created five pieces of art. Hero, hero bullet, enemy, enemy bullet, and the background. Yes, I will be using Photoshop again, but not tonight. So to give myself some memory, I'm going to close this, close this, and pop into Game Maker. There we go. Welcome to Game Maker. Take a deep breath. I'm going to check my time real fast. Okay, 43 minutes. So it took me 43 minutes to go onto the website to decide what I was going to make, to select what I was going to make, save what I was going to make, and edit those graphics. Not bad. That's really a good start for this. Now the question is, if it took 43 minutes to make my graphics, how long is it going to take to get to part one? Now, part one is very simply this. I need to make a hero that moves on a rail, that does not move off of the screen, the screen has a background, and the... Here and the enemies are on the screen and the hero shoots. That's what I want to get done tonight. And I want to do it nicely and I want to do it in drag and drop. So come over here and under getting started, I'm going to say new drag and drop. Excellent. And I'm going to call this rail shooter 2020 demo. Some people don't like drag and drop. I love drag and drop. Yes, you can work in GML. You can still work in GML, but right now I don't need to. All right, so I'm going to come over here to my sprites. No sprites. Create sprite. All right, the first sprite is my sprite underscore hero. Make sure you name your files properly. I mean your sprites properly. Import. And where is it? That's on the desktop. 
There it is, Spring 2020 demo. And I'm going to load the Hero. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm going to load all my graphics before I go through and explain all the other stuff. Create another sprite. Sprite underscore enemy. Import enemy. Beautiful. Do it again. Create sprite. Sprite underscore enemy bullet. Import enemy bullet. Create sprite. Sprite underscore hero bullet. Import. Okay. Good. And lastly, create sprite. Sprite underscore background. Import. Background. Beautiful. And you can see the resolution is 24 by 768. Everything is the resolution it's supposed to be because when I exported it, exported it at size. There is some rudimentary graphics element changing inside of GameMaker. We don't use them. We have Photoshop. Now, let's go back over to our hero. Look at the main things here. What is the origin? Right now, it's the upper left-hand corner. I don't want it to be there. That's going to be the origin. going to be the point of alignment, collision, uh, and also where the, the bullets come from. So I'm going to say right here, right around the center. That's pretty good. I don't want to put it right at the edge. I want to kind of give myself room to travel. So I'm going to say right around here. I'm also going to go to my collision mask, which is right now a full rectangle. And I'm going to change that to precise, which makes it so that only the part where there's picture is where the collision is. And now that I've done that for this one, I'm going to do it for the next one as well. This is the center of my enemy. That's where I want it to be. Collision mask set to precise. There it is. Next. So not very hard. I'm going to do this for each one. So this is the center of my bullet. And precise. And there's my bullet. And this is... Now this is going to be weird. I don't want to put the center. I'll probably put it right around here. A good nice rotational point. And then I come over here and I say... Oops, dot diamond precise good so now i have and then of course for the background i don't need to do anything with it i'm happy that the origin is in the upper left and i'm happy that there's no collision mask it's irrelevant i need one more sprite and the one sprite i'm going to need a little bit later on is some sort of a generic box just call it box sometimes you call it wall it's empty i'm going to come over here and i am going to see edit image grab my little paint bucket tool Grab some obnoxious color, fill it, and that's the end of that. That's all I needed to do. Now I've got a yellow box. Just Again, it's a reference point. So there we go. Deep breath in. That didn't take very long, did it? So I spent more time creating my art than loading my art, which is good. You're supposed to do that. You're supposed to spend time making your art to create good video games. All right, now, let's go to my room. Here's my room. I'm going to rename it. Instead of being called Room Zero, I'm going to call it Room... Come over here. Where's my rename? Room Game. There we go. Now, interestingly enough, Game Maker defaults to 10 to 4 by 768, so I'm good. Sorry about that. That's weird. 10 to 4 by 768, so that's good. Let me go to the background layer. And under the background layer, I'm going to say the background instead of no sprite is my sprite background, which I didn't actually call background. It's actually sprite background, but it's fine. I don't need to tile it. I don't need to do anything special because it's the exact size I need it to be, which is great. I'm going to go to my instance layer. So there's two layers. The instance layer is the background layer. I want to be in the instance layer from here on in. And I'm going to hit save. And I'm going to hit play just to run and see it build a beautiful background image. There it is. Made in Game Maker Studio. There's my, my window. Now, I'm going to take a quick aside to some of the other things that you can set up real fast. So I'm going to come down over here to see where it says um, configurations default. Sorry. Where it's going to say options main. If I click on options main, it's going to show a couple of things we need to, we need to know. The first thing is it's going to tell me that 
my game is currently using 60 game frames per second. So when I do timing stuff later on, everything is going to be related to this idea of steps and a step is how many game frames per second. So 60 is my number. If I go to Windows, which is really what I'm playing with here, instead of saying Made in Game Maker Studio, I'm going to call this Rail Shooter Demo. And of course, it's not 2019, it's 2020. Jared Bendis. And I can, I'll leave the rest of it alone. And what that little bit of nicety does is when I hit play and run it again, it's now going to say on the top of the screen, oh, it still says Made in Game Maker Studio. Let me come back over to Windows. And I mean, where it says Rail Shooter Demo, that would be the display name, it would be that. And there's other things I can do as well. But And what's kind of neat is you can actually change what the, if there's a splash screen, what the splash screen looks like and what the icon looks like in the corner. I'm not going to do any of that right now. That's a level of polish we'll get to. Hit play. Run, technically. It looks like a play button. And now it says Rail Shooter Demo. Good. Next. So now I need a hero. Now, the sprites as I are just a library of assets. They're just graphics. The things that go in rooms are objects, and the objects wear the sprites as clothes. All right, so let's do this. Create new object. Object underscore hero, and the sprite for that object will be the hero sprite. It is not solid because it's movable. If it moves, it's never solid. Make another sprite. Create another object, sorry. Object underscore enemy. And the sprite is going to be the enemy object. We don't put anything else in here yet. And if I go to my game and I'm on my instances layer right there, I can come over here and I can bring out my hero. There it is. And then I can go one enemy, two enemy, three enemy, four enemy five enemies now there we go i was gonna say it was a little close i gotta zoom out a little bit a little bit easier there that makes me feel good about it. so five enemies and the hero all right save run and i'm gonna constantly run to make sure nothing crashes you want to see it crash when you made one thing so you know one thing crashed beautiful continuing so i want to make the hero go up i want to make the hero go down Uh, the question from the audience, are there any specific benefits or drawbacks to using a precise collision mask compared to a simple shape? Yes and no. The simple shape is fine if it feels right. If Let me come over here as an example. If I come over here to my enemy where I have put in this beautiful, you know, preci precision thing. Now, this is a solid object. This is a real metal thing. But what if this was his beard? If this was his beard, I could actually change this to a... Um, let me go back to a manual ellipse. And I could say that that ellipse looks like this. And if I were to do that, then when you would go to hit him, this area wouldn't be sensitive. And that could give you a really cool game feel. It could be a terrible game feel as well. So this idea that two things coming around have to be like really colliding versus you can get a really nice sliding away effect. So that's where this comes into play. But because I'm dealing with things with a hard edge and I did a good job Photoshopping, I'm going to start off by going with the precise thing. Then later on, I can decide if I want to loosen that up, if I want to change it into something else. From a resource perspective, this is a 2D game. I'm not going to be, when it says slow, that's legacy slow. It's not going to be that slow for what we're trying to do. I hope that answered your question. All right. Coming back to my hero. Yay. Everything in Game Maker is going to be based on this idea of cause and effect. Actually, all programming languages is cause and effect something cause and effect inside of game maker the language is event and action so what is the event that i'm going to be doing there's three events i want to start off with 
The first event is a create event. The create event I'm going to use as often as possible because it's going to allow me to initialize variables so that I have all my eggs in one basket. So there's two variables that I know that I want to have on my hero. The first variable is going to be called variable underscore hero speed. How fast does he move? I'm going to say he moves 12. Experience tells me 12. I can make it 10, make it 20, just whatever. I can change it from here. The other is I'm going to use something called friction. And friction is going to allow me to slow down and stop. The higher the friction, the, friction, the more it's going to stop on a dime. So I'm going to do a nice, like, I'm going to do like one. No, I'm going to do point, 1.2. So that means when I let go of the mouse, every frame, it's going to slow down my speed 1.2, 1.2, 1.2 1 until I stop. All right. So that's my first thing. Make sense? Hope it does. So these are my variables. Now I need a key. Oh, there's three keys. Key down is always being triggered. Key up only triggers once. Key pressed only triggers once. Because I don't want to have to go click, 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 I'm going to be using key down. Always firing key down. Key down, up. Key down, up. So when I press the up button, I want to move up. And I'm going to do that by using the speed, the set speed. And I'm going to say that I want to move in the vertical direction of up. Well, up, down, up. Up is negative, down is positive. Left is negative, right is positive. Think the number line. So instead of going the speed of variable, look at that, it autofills hero speed, I want to go up. So I'm going to say negative variable hero speed. Make sense? That means when I hold the key down, I'm going negative 12 because that's vertical and it's negative 12. And if I do it again, key down, up. I'm sorry, key down, down, key down, down. I can set my speed to be vertical. Again, I'm on the vertical. And this time I'm going to go variable hero speed, which is positive, which goes down. And of course, what stops us is that friction. And that's enough to go. Those three commands. Initializing the variables, up down and let it slow to a stop up down up 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 and look at that it works yay and it feels good it feels good i could make it probably a little bit smoother and if i wanted a bit smoother then i would go back to my create event and i would set this to like 0.8 so it's a little bit spongier and I can make it even a little bit faster. Faster and spongier. See what it looks like. Oh, yeah, that's nice. I let go. One click, two click, three click. So that real sense of what the game feel is. Even though I'm only like, you know, let's say the one, two, three and a half. One, two, three and a half. Even with three to get up and down, I'm going to have to really go through to get this thing to move up and down. Now, the bad news is I'm off the screen. Totally off the screen. Oops, off the screen. Off the screen. So I need to block myself from going off the screen. So some people will try to do it using math. I don't want to do math. I want to do it in a visual way if possible. So... I'm going to come over here and I'm going to create another object, create object, object underscore wall. And that wall is going to be nice and bright yellow. It's a temporary thing. I want to be able to see it and it is solid so I can hit the wall. Now I'm going to go back to my room and I'm going to zoom out a little bit. Remember learning to zoom in and zoom out is very important. I'm going to put my wall up over here and then I'm not going to tile it. I'm not going to copy, copy, copy. I'm just going to grab one edge and I'm going to stretch it out. There's a wall. Now, if I wanted to, I could copy this wall and paste that wall and bring it over here. Now, the wall is actually in the room, so it's going to be visible. 
Let me show you what it looks like. Again, don't be afraid to stop and hit play. As long as you know it's not broken, it's great. So I can go over and I can go down, up and down. Wait a second. If you look for this interesting, you can see that the wall is on top of my hero. That comes us over here to this on the left where it says instance layer properties. The lower something is, the more on top it is. So technically, if I were to grab the object hero and put it here, then when I were to run it again, it would actually be on top of the walls. Now that's in a little bit, it's not going to make a difference, but it is interesting to see that now it's on top. So that's that sense of where the layers make a difference visually. Now, how do I make it so if I hit the wall? So this is where it gets fun. Again, cause and effect. When my hero, what? Add the event, collision. When my hero hits the wall, when my hero hits the wall, set the speed to zero. Now the direction part is very important. At any given moment, I'm moving the direction known as direction. Now that's only if I'm moving. If my speed isn't zero, then my direction will be direction. If my speed isn't actually, uh, if I'm not moving, then direction is always zero, which confuses people. So direction only is, matters when speed is zero. So we set the speed and the direction to zero. And that stops me. And watch this. Stop. 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 Interestingly enough, today it's working. I'm going to make it not work in a second. There's a really cool bug that actually happens inside of Game Maker. There it is. Notice that I'm t I'm at the top and I'm stuck. And the reason that I'm stuck is is that the collision is the next step. It's not really did I collide with the wall? Stop. It's am I about to collide with the wall? Stop. Because otherwise, if I collide in the wall, I'd be embedded. And I wouldn't be able to get out. And because of the friction slowing me down, I'm now off my track a little bit so that w I'm at least within my jump move, the speed, at any given moment. And so that's as low as I can go. That's as tall as I can go. But I can now I can get closer. And that's this weird thing with the friction. It annoys the crap out of everybody. It's not a bug. It's the nature of the way this works. The idea being is, is that as I'm getting closer to the wall, how close am I before I hit the next step, the wall, the next step? And it's going to stop me wherever it stops me. Here it's within one pixel. Here it's within 10. But it's never more than 12 because it let me go another step. So that little bitty thing needs to be overcome. And we're going to do that using our first honest-to-God function. Now, remember... We are always moving in a direction called direction at a speed of speed. These are what are known as instance variables. They're things that the, the instance knows about itself. It knows where it is, X, Y. It knows its speed. If the speed is not zero, it knows its direction. All of those things, because the direction be zero and then you're not moving. So what are we going to do? Before we stop, we're going to do a special command called a function call. And this function call is called move contact solid. And what that says is, is I want you to move this object as close to, or jump it basically to the nearest solid object in the direction of direction. See, this is direction, max distance. And that's the maximum distance it can jump. So instead of saying the direction, I'm going to say the direction is direction. In other words, whatever way you're going, keep going that direction. And jump, and negative one says, as much as it takes. So when I get close to the wall, right before I stop, it's going to kiss the wall. And when I'm going down, when it gets close to the wall, because I'm moving in the direction, it's going to jump down and it's going to kiss the wall. Stupid little function call. Move contact solid, but you got to do it before you stop and you have to stop afterwards. Otherwise, so stop, stop. And it doesn't matter how off the track I am, it stops every time. 
that nice? I love that command. It's a great command. It makes sense because it overcomes a little bit of not an error, but the mathematical complexities that sometimes happens inside of a game program. Beautiful. Now I can do, because I don't want the yellow walls gone, I can do one of two things. I can make the yellow walls invisible. I can actually uncheck visible. Now the yellow walls will be invisible, which is actually going to be worse because now it's going to stop before the end of the wall or before the end of the boundary of the room. But it's solid. Now, if there was a aesthetically pleasing wall in my background image, that would actually be great. But instead, I'm going to go back to my room. I'm going to put the walls outside of the room, which makes my life a little bit... Now, so everything snaps the grid. You won't see any of the yellow because it's invisible anyway. Up, down, up, down. Beautiful. There you go. Hope that makes sense. I'm pretty happy with it. Now, I've said I was going to do one more thing before I went to bed. And we are looking at an hour and six minutes for this tutorial. I think I've only been in Game Maker a few minutes. Really fun, by the way. I can actually go and check that out. So if I go back to main under general, it says that I have been doing this project for 21 minutes. That's how long I've been spending in this project. Don't tell my students. I'm going to check to see how long they were spending in their projects. Actually, it's silly. All right. So I want my hero to be able to fire. To do that, I need to have something called an object, a hero bullet. Create object, object underscore hero bullet, and the hero bullet is going to look like the hero bullet. Now, when the hero bullet spawns, when the hero bullet is created for the first time, what do we want that bullet to do? And the answer is very simply, I want to move rapidly, rapidly, to the right. So I'm going to add a create event and I'm going to say when you are created start to move horizontally and let's say 16, 18. Boom. That's all it does. Make sense? That's all it does. Move. Now I'm not going to put one on the screen. If I put one on the screen, it's just going to move off the screen. What object is going to create the hero bullet? The hero. For our purposes, I'm going to add the event called, uh, not a key down, not a key down. I'll show you key down in a second. It's a nightmare. That would be a laser. I want a key pressed of the space bar. And when the space bar key is pressed, I am going to create an instance of what, where. The instance is the hero bullet. And the where is on the origin point of the hero. So zero, zero, relative. So the zero point of the hero, the hero becomes the canvas that the hero bullet's being placed on. And the hero bullet has its own origin point, and the hero has its own origin point, and those get lined up. That's it. That's all I have to do. That's one line of code. I press the space bar, and the hero comes out. Look at that. Boom. Boom. I may not like where it's coming out. See, it's kind of coming out a little high, and that's because I put the alignment point down low. Da, 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 da. This is fun. This is fun. That's nice. So I already can look at my game feel and realize that it's too high. The origin point on my bullet is too high. One other thing is those uh, bullets are going off and off and off and off and off, and they're taking up memory. So what I want to do is I want to have them delete themselves when they leave the room. We'll get to that. First thing I want to do is go to my hero bullet and I want to come back to my... Yeah, I want to bring this up a little bit. This makes a lot more sense. And even my hero... Where is that? Maybe bring it down a little bit. So that's where those alignments come in. So let me go back to my hero bullet for a second. So right now, when it's created, it starts to move. That's an event. Create, move. Event, action. There's another event under other called outside room. And what I'm saying is, is when this object is outside of the room, what I'm going to do is I'm going to destroy itself. 
And when I mean that, you don't, it's automatically set to self. But if I come down here, I want you to see that one of the things is called self and other. We'll be dealing with other on the next tutorial. But right now we say destroy itself. So if the object is outside the room, it destroys itself. And there we go. Let's take a look. That's nice. Look how it feels like it's in the right place. It still might be a little big, but we'll see that in a second, how that affects everything else. And we won't know until we do. And then if we do, we have to go back in. We'll change the size of our graphics by going into Photoshop, resizing things, exporting them, and bringing them in again. The good news is, is that the sprites will cascade into the objects and we'll go from there. All right. Now I got to do one last thing before we go to bed. One last thing to make it satisfying. Let's come back over to my object bullet, the hero bullet. When the hero bullet collides with the enemy, two things are going to happen. The first thing is I'm going to destroy, not myself, I'm going to destroy the other, the thing I collided with, the enemy. And then I'm going to destroy myself. I like to always destroy the enemy before you destroy yourself because I don't like the idea that I've destroyed it. Sometimes you can prematurely end a routine that way. So now, even though I won't be able to respawn them, I should be able to destroy my enemies. I can smite them. Bow, bow. See, and you could see why if I did like a different shape, it would be different there. And that's it. That's all I was going to do for this tutorial. So a lot of Photoshop, a lot of design, and a few minutes of Game Maker. Again, let's just take a look. Uh, Twenty Half an hour. It's half an hour in Game Maker, and that was me talking the whole time. Any questions before I go on, before I uh, shut down for the night? So if anybody's watching, I'll answer any other questions. Uh, again, the idea is we can go up, we can go down, we can... Oh, I know I was going to show one last thing. I was going to show you the laser. Remember, when we're doing the hero bullet, we, uh, when we're doing the hero, we fire the hero bullet and a key press. Click, click, click. If I were to change this event from key press to key down spacebar, then it'll shoot so rapid fire, it'll look like a laser. I'm not going to say it isn't satisfying, but it doesn't let you vis visually see the graphics that you're looking for. Ooh, all right, so we can come over here. Close it, and I'm going to go change it back. Not from key down space, I'm going to change it to just key pressed space. And not key up, because you want to fire pressing down, not release, release, release. That doesn't make any sense. So just to double check that I'm not going to leave anything broken. And here we go. Up hits the wall. Down hits the wall. Fire. And there you go. Nothing breaks and everything's destroyed. So that is the, your homework. If you're one of my students, that is what's due next week. So I can see everything in action. And then we are going to go add things like animations. Animations are big. And then we're going to go through and make the enemies shoot. And then we'll go on from there. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please uh, follow me. Like me. If you're viewing this on Twitch, if you're viewing this on YouTube, uh, ring the bell, follow me, all type of good stuff. My name is Jared Bendis, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial.